All right, uh, getting into game three here. Um, this one was a lot more just little things uh, instead of more big picture. And, and as we get further through the set, a lot of the stuff I would have already mentioned uh, once or twice. So there'll be less big things to cover. Um, yeah. There's the like the not knowing whether to aggressively land or um, defensively land that I mentioned in game one. There's something I see as Ivysaur um, a couple times this stock. So a lot of the time you go for grabs that barely miss, like right there. Um, and a lot of the time, something that normally could be punished by other characters can't really be punished by dash grab with Ivysaur. Um, so... Generally, what you want to do is you want to just, if you don't think or you're not super confident that dash grab will work or that you have enough time, dash attack is really good because it sends them up and it puts them in a disadvantageous spot. And any move that puts someone above Ivysaur is really good. So that's the difference between a frame 4 move and like a frame 13 move, I'm pretty sure is what Ivysaur's dash grab is. And, and dash attack is frame 4. So that is like a huge discrepancy in how fast the move is. So if you're not sure something can punish, the same they basically both work in the same range. So in the same amount of time, or if you in the same window, same like range, um, dash attack will cover the same space as dash grab, but with less reward. And if you don't think you can get dash grab, then dash attack works a lot of the time and and you should just go for it because even if you could have got the dash grab it's really not worth risking it because you you leave yourself so open and, and it puts you in a bad spot here um and you end up dying there so just generally um doing more dash attack instead of dash grab in situations where you're not really sure you can get the grab is really good yeah so something i i start to see um, here and throughout this entire stock as Zard is that you shield way too much. So a lot of the time, even when you're the one in the advantageous position, right here, he dashes back into the corner and does and does a power wave. You could b run up and force yourself into the situation, maybe do a jumping aerial, but instead you shield and then dash back and shield again. So you're not really taking advantage of this corner pr position that he's in and threatening him the way that you could be. So you start shielding more throughout the set also. Um, and something that you need to realize is that um, keeping yourself in one place as Zard is way worse than it is for other characters. Because since Zard's hitbox is so big, um, a lot of the time if you're going to be shielding and, and you get scared, you know, you shield in the corner whatever you try to jump out or to escape or you try to roll away to escape um a lot of the time even if someone's aiming for where you were like let's say you're shielding in the left side um kalos area i think you were at some point in the set it, it might happen in a little bit um and he runs up and tries to do an aerial on the left side here if you try to jump or if you try to like roll or whatever it's still gonna hit you even if, like, they're not really aiming for the read or they're not reading your jump or whatever, it's still going to work because Zard's hitbox is so big. So shielding a Zard is good because he has pretty good out-of-shield options, but if you do it too much, it just locks yourself in place. And especially when you're in the advantage situation, uh, you end up shielding and bringing it back to neutral or maybe even the opponent's advantage because you just get too scared. Um, and as Zard, you're the one that's being scary. Like, when you're, when you're playing against Zard, you are scared shitless so you need to take advantage of the fact that you could kill them at any moment with you know some strong offstage cheese or whatever so playing like more confident with zard is is definitely something that in general i'd say you need to work on right here um i, I it's 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 in this area i noticed that you do a lot of aggressive options off ledge um i'd like to see a lot more roll especially you don't really roll off ledge ever and um jump too you do just a lot of neutral get up and uh drop down aerials uh there you roll but uh, it, it, that was when he was dashed back a lot of the time he'll ledge trap by um putting himself like right at the ledge position like right there at neutral get up and doing roll there when you haven't really done it the whole set is is really good 
That was a super good parry razor leaf, by the way. Uh, you end up playing the rest of this game pretty well. Um, there's a couple unfortunate things that happen, but yeah. Um, just just mixing up your ledge options more, and also mixing up the timing that you get off ledge uh, is is something that's super important. Nice little combo here. This position here is really weird. I just remember what happens here is kind of awkward. <laughs> Ends up kind of working out. Um, right here, uh, you switch to Charizard uh, when you get hit to the top of the screen. And then he lands with uh, with an uppy. Um, a lot of time in this situation right here, especially on this wide of a stage where there's not really any mix-ups, dash to the left side of the stage or wherever the closest ledge is, and Flare Blitz. It will cover everything. Because there's too much landing lag. If you would have just dashed back in Flare Blitz, there was nowhere he could have gone, and he would have just exploded. So right here is this where the, the shield thing definitely was like a lot of a problem. Because after he gets back to ledge, you dash back, and you just shield. There wasn't really a reason to do that. So... What you need to do here is, because you, you ended up walking up to the right position, as Zard, I love spacing at roll distance, so you're doing the right thing here. Um, you walk up here, and this is the position where I would F-tilt every time. I always stand a little back, and then I walk forward, and wait for the neutral getup, and I F-tilt it. Because a lot of the time, people want a neutral getup in this situation. This is like most people's last hit panic option, is just doing that. So I've won so many games by just hitting that. But you just shield. And even if they roll, by the way, one of the reasons why F-Tilt is so good, because if they were to roll in this situation, um, it would cover roll. Because the, the sour spot would, uh, would hit it barely, because it's pretty active. So yeah, that's it for this game.